So our first topic for today is all about what is a message. This PowerPoint presentation was presented and uh, created by Mr. Lorenzo Ruiz Costo, one of the OLC's 4GE6176. So first, what is a message? A message is something what we communicate for. And also in communication, we have very, uh, in the previous lessons, we have uh, seen you know, the different purposes of communication. And for this lesson for today, we have two various purposes of communication. That is to argument and to persuade or argumentation and persuasion. So when we argue, we persuade, we persuade someone to believe in our opinion or point of view. This is why we tried so much to debate, negate, and to persuade. It has always been the purpose of an argument. We can never say yes all the time, especially when we know that something in the sentence is not right or it quite differ from the idea we tend to believe in. You know, that's why we have argumentation. The most important part of an argument is to persuade someone without losing credibility. We should provide solid and valid evidences. No? So like for the examples of uh, in the Philippine politics, as, as we speak, no? so we have uh, so many claims no? without solid and valid evidences coming from those people who supports uh, any political figure. So I will not drop the so it will come from the re references or sources cited in the book, magazines, journals, articles, and any other printed materials. Yeah. So we have uh, two, types, uh, uh, two types of references or sources. First is a primary source, and the second one would be the secondary source. Primary source, uh, mostly they are the persons who experience it firsthand. For example, no, when we talk about martial law, we need to get or, uh, or uh, uh, need some solid and valid evidences for our claims, specifically no, with, by the means of those people who lived during that era. No? So that is the primary source. And, and that would be also one of the great sources no, para to prove your point. Yeah. Also, we can use references and sources you know, mostly cited in the books, magazines, and any journals you know, or any other printed material. So that is argumentation. We face numerous challenges every day. And one of those is when we have to persuade some to change their minds. Situations where we want to persuade include reveal, do, desist, learn and believe. So first reveal. This situation arises when you know someone knows something, but they cannot tell you about it. Perhaps information is very confidential. So your power of persuasion will be put to test. In conversation, information is revealed a bit at a time and in a turn taking format. So uh, that's why we have this uh, quotations na uh, nahuhuli ang isda, uh, uh, nahuhuli sa sariling bibig ang isda, parang ganyan. No? So parang you are caught red-handed. Yeah. So that, that means uh, most of the informations ay talagang nare-reveal din naman somewhat in uh, a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of time and it takes in turn-taking format. Yeah. So... Um, Mostly naman ng mga ng tao, di ba? Uh, when we want to know something, specifically yung mga confidential, we find the way. You know, we find ways to know that confidential information. Specifically in uh, an ordinary man setting, for example. Sa group of friends, di ba? Kapag may mga tinatago sila sa inyo, di ba? We have these ways na malaman kung ano ba yung tinatago nilang sekretong ito. No? Also, also, our power to persuade someone will be put to test. So that is reveal. The second one, and most situations you know, that would be called for reveal would be in job interviews, police inter interrogations, and getting to know someone. Next is do. You know, the power of persuasion will be 
test if you convince someone to do something for you. This is very, very beneficial to someone who can do this kind of situation, but time is always a hindrance. So for example, of these situations we have is parenting, managing sales and propaganda. The third one would be desist. You know, includes the act of telling someone to stop his or her doing. This is the act of making them stop, although this may seem difficult since habit is nearly impossible to change. Your ability to persuade will vary. The common situations of this would be in parenting and uh, government policy, for example, as smoking. No, so uh, as you can see, no, sa mga bumibili dyan, mga uh, cigarette for their uncles and their uh, father and for so someone, no, may kita natin sa mga box of cigarettes, meron dyan mga uh, sakit na maaaring makuha sa paninigarilyo, di ba? Yan. So isa din yan sa pamamaraan ng government policy to set an example no, na smoking kills, kumbaga. Next one would be learn. No, the goal is to impart knowledge and making someone understand something. No, so, so the common situations would be here is in teaching, coaching, and parenting. Lastly is to believe. No? Changing someone's belief, such as in religious conversations, beliefs are at the base of much of what we assume is true. This makes persuading at this level both powerful and difficult. Yet, when you master working at this level, no, you may be better at all around persuading. So most of this, no, we are, uh, most of our time, no, may mga pagkakataon po na may mga dumadalo sa ating mga religious uh, groups, no, like Mormons, sa mga bahay-bahay, di ba? Yung house-to-house -house visits nila, mga INCs, mga Christians, and so on and so forth, wherein they are persuading you no, to change your, uh, to change what you believe no, or to change your religion. Yan. So, yan yung mga isa sa mga ano, uh, pamamaraan to persuade someone. And most common situations that we have here is leadership, religious, or cult conversations. Also, hindi lang naman din siya sa religious. Eh. Pwede din siya sa leadership like in social political uh, aspects. So for example, no, may mga bandwagon na sinasabi na si Lenny ay lugaw or si Marcos ay magnanakaw, no? so on and so forth. No? So may mga ganyang pagkakataon. Eh, no? May mga ilang tao na sinisira yung kumpiyansa natin sa mga gusto nating iboto when it comes to uh, election this coming 2022. Diba? So yung may mga nilalabas silang mga evidences daw kuno na mga ganyan. No? So uh, if you are a voter, no, I want you to uh, analyze also to educate yourself kung ano ba talaga yung nangyari noon, ano ba yung kaya na, kayang ibigay ng mga politikong ito. No? Uh, let's just look on, on their platforms first no? bago tayo mag-conclude uh, na sila yung ating iboboto. So I am not uh, I am not uh, telling you na iboto niyo si Marcos, iboto niyo si Lenny, si Rastaman at kung sino man, di ba? So sana uh, isa na lang ito sa mga magiging ano ko, uh, gusto kong sabihin is that uh, vote wisely, no? Timbangin natin maigi kung ano-ano ba yung kanilang mga kakayanan, yung maaari nilang magawa sa ating bansa. Okay? Also, we have here uh, on how to persuade people to agree. No? So first is by term liking. No? It is easy to persuade people if they like you. Most of the time, that's why no, for most of our uh, close friends, kasi gusto nila tayo. No? Specifically, yung mga best friends natin na may lihim na pagtingin. No? That's why most of them, no, talagang uh, kung ano yung pinapagawa natin sa kanila, ginagawa nila. No. Second one is social proof. Implies that people are moving in the direction you want. Third one is consistency. We must keep our words consistent. The fourth one would be authority. People are strongly influenced by experts like doctors. No? Kapag sinabi lang na 99.9% oh, na natatanggal yung bacteria 
or germs sa ating katawan kaya gamitin natin ito no so that's why most of the uh, commercials no talagang may binabanggit sila mga experts no kasi we as a we as a uh, person no most of the time we always or we are being influenced no specifically by these experts Okay, ano pa ka importante ng kanilang mga kasi kapag sinabi nating experts yan or na, sila ay authority no parang may they are inflicting uh, knowledge to us no that's why uh, okay sinabi na ng doktor di ba so yun na dapat yung gawin so may mga ganyan tayong pagkakataon or ganyang type on how to persuade people to agree the fifth one would be scarcity wherein people want what they cannot have Yan. Yun yung mga ano eh, mga pamamaraan eh. No? So for example, no, o yan. Nangako siya na bibigyan kanya ng trabaho. That's why you always agree, no, kung sa kanyang mga sinasabi, no. Or bibigyan kanya ng kotse, no. So you will agree, no, to whatever he or she will say to you as long as you can have your car. Yan. Next is reciprocity. No, reciprocity is to give something to gain something. So most of the time yan yung mangyayari sa ating election this coming 2022. <laughs> diba? So most of uh, politicians na gusto tumakbo or they have these ambitions to run for the presidency. Yan, talaga magbibigay sila ng magbibigay, no? Just to lure us, no, to agree to their platforms na iboto sila. No? Pero sana wag tayo magpapadala sa mga ganyan klaseng pamamaraan para tayo ay masuyo na iboto sila no so yeah. so my final uh, quotations for me no dito sa ating topic for today is to vote wisely kasi nga sa darating nating eleksyon diyan nakasalalay ang ating henerasyon sa ngayon okay. so next topic is all about communication and strategies using tools of technology so in the previous lesson, we understand why there is a need for humans to communicate. They do so for certain reasons and purposes. To achieve those purposes, communicative strategies will be used to obtain, provide, and disseminate information. We already know how communication changed drastically with the aid of technology. So it is important for people to take into account every aspect of how they are relaying information. So most of the time, technology plays a vital part you know, when it comes to communication. Obviously, you know, we have a lot of ways to communicate with others like uh, social media platforms, you know, yung mga applications na dinadownloads natin. You know? So those are just some of the tools of technology you know, that can aid uh, for the betterment of our communication. That's why no, meron tayong mga uh, information dissemination sa uh, pamamaraan ng social media, sa mga websites, and any other uh, tool of technology. Also, one way to obtain information is to ask questions using the questions of why, what, who, when, where, and how. This is the most common and the simpler way to get information. But what is the use of communicative strategies to obtain information? When we employ uh, strategies in communication, it creates an easy way for better understanding because it details the message, audience, and resource of communication. So we have here the different types, so the seven types of communicative strategies. So first off, we have nomination. No, under nomination, according to Cohen, no, strategies must be used to start and maintain a conversation since it's also bound by implicit roles. No, so first is nomination. A speaker nominates to collaborate and produce a sensible topic. When the strategy is being employed, it opens a good topic with people using it. No, ito yung mostly ginagawa ng ating mga ano eh, mga YouTube influencers wherein they are creating these certain kind of challenges no na kung saan sina challenge nila yung mga sarili nila yung mga paniniwala nila and any other types of ch challenges no wherein 
they are just opening a good topic for others to follow. Yeah. So that is nomination. Next one would be restriction. It refers to any limitation you have as a speaker. So you, for example of this, you were asked by your teacher to deliver a speech in a specific language. So for example, we as a Filipinos, we don't know or we are not very fluent when it comes to English language. But then your teacher asks you to create a speech wherein uh, you must speak or, uh, or the language should be in English. Yeah. So we as a Filipinos, talagang yan yung ating restrictions. No? And, but, but I cannot uh, say for others, no, kasi may mga iba naman na they can speak, no, but uh, we as a Filipinos kasi we have this kind of mentality na we are using English as a base for intelligence, no, but we cannot, no, turn into that. <laughs> so that next one would be the turn taking. It pertains to the process by which people decide who takes conversation on floor. The idea is to always give communicators a chance to speak. So just like in face-to-face uh, -face classes, no, we're in, no, your teachers are giving you a chance to speak when you have any questions or uh, if you want clarifications about his or her lessons. So turn-taking, obviously, in communication, we cannot speak no, all at once. No, imagine in a world where in we cannot or we do not know how to listen to uh, speakers. Diba? So, magiging magulo at uh, it would become also very uh, chaotic, no? Kasi talagang hindi natin sila mag, hindi tayo magkakaintindihan. That's why one of the uh, best communicative strategies is to turn taking, no? Bigyan natin ng chance yung mga taong gusto magsalita. So that is turn taking. Next is a topic control. Topic control it consists of procedural formality or informality that affects the development of topics in conversation. So topic control na gusto niya siya lang yung ka topic, no? So may mga ganyan tayo mga friends and even loved ones na gusto natin siya, uh, gusto nila sila lang yung pinag-uusapan, parang parang center of attraction kumbaga. No? Next uh, is the topic topic shifting sorry <clears throat> topic shifting it involves moving from one topic to another no wherein you have this previous topic and then you will introduce another topic so that is topic shifting no lalong lalo na kung uh, yung topic na yan ay medyo sensitive to the other party so pwede mo siyang i-topic shift so next is to repair Repair, it shows how the speaker address his problem that he may encounter in a conversation. So for example, if this is yung mga corrections, no? yung mga terms na correct me if I'm wrong, yan. so you are just uh, uh, seeking no? for their approval or their confirmations kung tama ba yung iyong mga sinasabi. No? So there are times na ginagamit ko rin itong mga terms na ito no specifically kung i am not very uh, familiar or very sure of what i am saying no? in that moment of time lastly is the termination we're in termination uh, refers to the conversation participants close initiating expressions that end a topic in a conversation so for example is that's all for today Thank you for listening. So may mga ganyan tayong ano eh, uh, pagwawakas sa mga conversation or sa pakikipag-usap. So it varies no, in different kind of languages or dialects na meron tayo. No? So iba-iba tayong pamamaraan kung paano natin tinaterminate yung ating pakikipag-usap sa iba. Okay, so those are the types of communicative strategies. And I hope, no, I hope no, you learned so much and I want to... Uh, once again, to thank you guys for patiently waiting and to attending, uh, for you guys to attend this session. So, maraming maraming salamat. Gracias, danke, thank you. So, uh, stay safe and be good po always. So, have a great day po.